everybody. I'm Kenny Wardell from Band Magazine. It's my pleasure to be at the B.R. Cone Winery this afternoon for the Fall Festival. Headlining today is the Doobie Brothers with Michael McDonald. And with us today is none other than the lead singer of the Doobies, Tommy Johnston. You guys have been around for 40 plus years. Here it, isn't it? I'm telling you. <laughs> Back in the 60s and early 70s, the word Doobies was the code name for marijuana cigarettes. Did that have any influence on you naming the band the Doobie Brothers? Not me personally. I, uh, actually, none of the people in the band named the band. It was named. Uh, it was a name suggested by a guy who was living with us on, well, the guys that were living there anyway, but uh, on 12th Street, and his name was Keith Rosen, because we were playing and we didn't have a name. And uh, he said, why don't you call you guys? You guys ought to call yourself that. And we said, that's a stupid name. <laughs> but we don't have one, so we'll use it. <laughs> and we did, and we're still using it. <laughs> uh, the Doobie Brothers have had an unbelievable, basically two-part career that spanned your hard rock, road ha roadhouse boogie period, and a more blue-eyed, soulful period. Uh, but then your number one song that you had is Black Water. It's a country bluegrass song. How has the band endured all these incarnations? It just has. That's the best answer I can give you. I don't have a specific reason. It's like, um, it's, it's always a work in progress. Things just keep moving along, you know. They, they always ask you the question, well, if you, when you got started, do you think you'd be doing it? I said, hell no, I didn't. Think beyond today, man. Today is where it's just like today, same thing, you know. Right. Today is where it's at, and that's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the 80s, you had some health issues, and the band was out on tour, and I guess uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter, Baxter suggested that um, maybe they could bring in Michael McDonald to help. That was actually the mid-70s, yeah. That was uh, right at the beginning of the Stampede tour, uh, and I had a bleeding ulcer that was really, really bad, and uh, I ended up in the hospital with it and stuff. But it got healed. I went out and did um, the spring tour with, uh, you know, for taking it to the streets and been going ever since. So. And then the Minute by Minute album that was, you know, with Michael and uh, that had big, big hits, uh, mm -hmm. hit records on there. Yeah. And uh, so what does it mean for you to be playing with Michael again today? Oh, I enjoy playing with Michael. It's fun. It's a nice change of pace, man. It's cool. Great. He's a good guy. You know, Mike's fun to hang out with. You know, uh, Band Magazine is back now, but we're online, and it's bandmagazine.com, mm -hmm. and uh, you were in Band Magazine a lot during your career. And uh, do you have any uh, Bammies memories of... Uh, uh, yeah, a couple of them. <clears throat> Went from Bammies to Cammies at the end there, as I recall. Um, I remember being over there at the regular Bammies thing and picking up the Bammy for the group. Uh, and I remember walking by the Grateful Dead's table, and they were all yelling and screaming, and they ended up getting up on stage playing with Huey. It was a wild night all the way around. We had just had our first sign, and it was nuts. But it was a great night, because they were, they were partying, the whole place was partying, and uh, I had to give up, give a acceptance speech, I guess you'd call it. I don't uh -huh. know. So that was that. <clears throat> so um, we're going to be planning a uh, Welcome Back BAM party. And we want to do like the Bay Area music prodigy, and we want to do uh, get we want to invite people like Neil Sean's son Miles and Bill Champlin's son Will and Greg Kin's son Rye and Billy Joe Armstrong's son and Tommy Johnston's daughter Laura. What do you think about that? That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. And just have all the kids of the bands from the the, the day and mm -hmm. uh, but feature them, so put the spotlight on them. I yeah. just I think that would be fantastic experience. Absolutely. Cool. Tell us about Laura. Uh, what, what's she doing? In <clears throat> she's at USC. She's in her senior year. She's been uh, doing a lot of writing in Nashville and LA both. And uh, she's got uh, a complete album's worth of tunes and more now. Um, and she does gigs as often as she can. And she still has to do all the work for school. So she's kind of balancing her time with that. But she's uh, she put a lot of time into this. A lot of time because she wanted to. Because we sat down and talked to him. I said, "You sure you want to do this? It's a crazy business, man." But uh, you know, I watched her. She spent hours and hours and hours and hours on her own practicing. I sure didn't tell her to go do it. And uh, and she's developed to where she is now, which is pretty incredible. I heard it as I came in this afternoon, and she sounded great. Yeah, kick ass. Do you have a favorite Doobie Brothers song? God, I hate that question. No offense. <laughs> I would say no. I okay. don't. I've got songs that I like, but it's not a song. It's uh, 
I mean, it's, I like I like everything pretty much, but uh, there's some songs that mean you know a little right, something. Right. Doesn't mean they were hits or anything. They're just songs, right. you know. Right. Well, um, I started playing your first record with nobody on it uh, back in the early 70s. I was at KSAM Radio and played that. And, and uh, Traveling Man, was that on that record too? Mm -hmm. Love those songs. And uh, Nobody uh, came back, you put it out again just I recently. put it on that most recent album, yeah, on World Gone Crazy. It was Ted's idea and we first went, really, you want to put that out again? <laughs> it's been out twice and uh, it's not so much that he wanted to put it out as he just wanted to re-record it and get it done right because he was right about the fact that it didn't get recorded, you know, as by any means as well as it could because that was on the first album we ever did in life and mm -hmm. we, we were all novices and, and uh, we really improved on it. It sounds really it's good. It's a now. great song, great song. You know, I think the 49ers should use that as their theme song because uh, really? remember when uh, Coach Harbaugh said, you know, who's got it better than us? Nobody! <laughs> oh, yeah, I see where you're going. Cool. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest that to the coach. <laughs> okay. Tommy, thanks a lot for taking the time My to pleasure, see us man. today, man. Always great to see you. You too, man. All right. Take care, man. Okay, thanks. <laughs>